Hey, I'm uh, Tamara White, and I'm Alex's mom. I'm Robbie White. I'm Alex's dad. Um, I'm uh, Alex Emerson White. With Alex, um, it was not really a concern. He was our fifth child, so you know, the first you pay all this attention to, and by the time the fifth comes, you're lucky if you have a bag packed. And so we um, we didn't know Alex had Down syndrome. Thought nothing of it. Thought we were just going to glide through this one. It was the fifth one, and we were excited. And all of a sudden, um, the nurse came in and said, "It looks like we're going to have to have C-section because." Someone wasn't cooperating. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. so you were not cooperative. You were not, and so um, we have the C-section, and again, we think everything's fine and dandy. And um, later that evening, the doctor came in and said that Alex had some markers of a of a baby with Down syndrome, and those being, you know, the straight line on your hand. He had a straight line on his hand. Um, and a couple of other markers. We weren't going to know definitively until they did a blood test. So we were in the hospital waiting, and um, I was actually by myself in the room when a nurse came in and said the test is back, and it's positive. And um, you know, I'm going to just be transparent. In the moment, it was very hard. And so I called Rob and I said, "Hey, take the kids to to mom's house." and come to the hospital and you know usually you want your husband to do what you ask him to do and he didn't do what I asked him to do in that instant did he no he brought um, he brought all the kids with him to the hospital he had already told them what was going on and my oldest walked in and came straight over to me and she said mom don't worry she said we got this and she said we love him we don't care and I thought in that instance, wow, how did she become the mom and I became the child? Because um, that's what happened. And it, that was the turning point for where we embraced this was just gonna be a blessing. And um, yeah, you actually turned out to be a blessing. Yeah, I, I was a blessing, all, all my siblings loved me. Things like this are in God's hands. And I, I had that foundation and I, I just have always known everything is going to be all right and it has been it's he has exceeded everything we could have dreamed of and we wouldn't trade it for anything in the world when you get a diagnosis of down syndrome you there's a whole array of um, challenges you can be faced with um, they include um, you know cognitive challenges you can have heart challenges you can have auditory, visual, um, immune system challenges. Um, so really our path at the very beginning, if I had to say what was different with Alex compared to our other kids, is we just were at a heightened awareness that we needed to do a lot of tests quickly to figure out where we were and what he needed and then try to figure out um, what therapies we needed to put in place. And we were very lucky that Alex didn't have any heart conditions um, he had extensive ear troubles, hence why he wears ear tubes today. We've got two permanent holes that um, we went through four different surgeries for different ear tubes and what have you. Um, he was born with vision issues, so we had how many? We've had at least three surgeries for eye corrections. Um, the muscles become very weak in a person with Down syndrome where their eyes will kind of go to drift inward and so you have to go back and correct that periodically so we've become best friends with a lot of doctors because we seem to see them more regularly for surgeries um, but in terms of you know major things like heart issues we didn't we didn't experience that which was good the autoimmune system has definitely been something that has touched us we've gone from having a full head of hair like this two years ago we were completely bald so and we had not a lick of hair whatsoever and we literally lost it um, probably within two nights and it's very strange because you think when you go into a if you're losing your hair you go in and you see like hair it just disappeared it's like a hair fairy came and took his hair so we uh, we don't know they still don't know what necessarily causes that um, they put us on a couple of different medications that seem to work um, but you know they have a lot of different 
theories. It could be stress. It could be, you know, related to hormones and your particular um, development where you are. But that has affected him more. And um, I'd be lying if I didn't say the boy's a little vain and he likes to have his hair. <laughs> so yeah, I like my hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember one time my sister shaved my head. Well, she shaved your head because you had very little hair left and only one patch at that at that one point. So we were trying to make it even for you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you'll notice, we, we do have this right now that's not allowed to be touched or mm -hmm. cut, right? It's right. man hair. It's man hair. Yes, yeah, so and he's keeping that man hair right now. Alex has been in an inclusive environment since he was in kindergarten. And given the proper accommodations and modifications, along with his individual education program, that targets how he learns best, Alex continues to thrive in school. In junior high, Alex was a member of the National Junior Honor Society, serving in a leadership role for community service. Now a senior, Alex has been a member of the National Honor Society all four of his high school years. I loved baseball all my entire life. Um, yeah. And I always, uh, uh, always listened to my uh, uh, coach, like, how to swing, how to catch, mm -hmm. and, and run all, all the bases. It's just fun to see all my friends. When his sister graduated from SMU, uh, we had the opportunity to meet President Turner, and Alex, uh, shook his hand and and explained to him how much he would enjoy if they had a program at SMU. So that's what we're hoping will come to fruition someday, soon. I, I want to give away a half of my money to homeless people and uh, I, I want to make a, a, a shelter for homeless in needs. It's called a uh, care alive. I just wanted to help people or homeless to uh, take care of them uh, and um, I, um, and I, I want to also own a Lamborghini because uh, it's just super uh, cool to have to, to have and I want to live in a penthouse uh, and uh, and uh, bring a uh, good uh, Bring what? Good. A lot of babes to my penthouse. A lot of babes to yeah. your penthouse? Uh. <laughs> Bring babes to your penthouse. He was featured on the cover of Dallas Down Syndrome Calendar with then Texas Ranger Elvis Andrews. Turns out this young man is multi talented, and in eighth grade he found another love theater. This young thespian most recently performed in the first high school adapted presentation of Cats which was recognized in the New York Times. He has dreams of being cast on one of his favorite TV shows. Alex has received countless awards in both sports and academics. It appears that Alex's greatest love, however, is for God and his community. Alex is very involved with his best buddies chapter at Pierce High School, which his sister Emma founded four years earlier. He was voted in as an ambassador his freshman year, vice president his sophomore year, and has served as president both his junior and senior years. He also serves as a member of the Best Buddy Student Advisory Board for North Texas. You're impersonating Pop. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Get it out. <laughs> Go ahead. Have fun. Uh, okay. Oh, my punk hearts. Hoi, hoi, hoi. Somebody put a rubber snake in my bed the other night. <laughs> that was me. Earlier I said that when we found out he had Down syndrome, we were apprehensive. We, we were scared, quite honestly. I couldn't imagine our lives without him right now, just as he is. I, I wouldn't change a thing. And um, I just, I'm proud he's our son. And I, I love him with all my heart, just like we do all the kids, but he's um, brought something to us that we, you can't buy, um, you can't find anywhere else. And I thank God for that. Mm -hmm.
love him too. Yeah. <laughs>